more pressure groups spring up as 2019 elections draw near and newfound confidence among key players in the manufacturing industry as the Buhari administration takes steps to conquer importation. These and more on today's Panorama with me, Naja Atutijani. Thank you for joining us. The federal government is collaborating with the private sector to increase the pool of industrial agricultural commodities in Nigeria through the introduction of an exotic plant of proven industrial and economic importance. Well, I understand that that story will not be coming now, so we'll go on to the next story. As the 2019 elections draw near, more pressure groups have continued to spring up in support of President Muhammad Buhari. One of them is the Parliamentary Support Group, comprising progressive members of the House of Representatives. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports. The Parliamentary Support Group is formed by people of like minds to passionately articulate and push forward President Muhammad Buhari's vision on the floor of the House of Representatives and indeed the National Assembly. At the closed door meeting, also attended by the national chairman of the APC, Adam Soshomole, and the secretary to the government of the federation, Bos Mustafa, the president engaged the parliamentarians on issues concerning the governing APC, state of the nation, projects and programs of government, as well as personal concerns and apprehension as the 2019 elections draw near. Leaders of the group who spoke to newsmen described the engagement with the president as fruitful. It is necessary to come and inform the president that we are committed to remain party members, rally behind the president so that we can take our party to victory in the 2019 general elections. He took time to explain to us a lot of things that uh, he is doing, his vision for the country. He clarified a lot of uh, issues. And as you can see, members are living very, very happy. And things will be fine. They urge President Muhammad Buhari to sustain his genuine efforts at making Nigeria better, promising to work harder towards enhancing cordiality between the executive and the legislature. For the secretary to the government of the Federation, Boz Gida Mustafa, the interface was highly encouraging and desirable. Politics is a game of negotiation, it's a game of dialogue, it's a game of understanding. And it's for the betterment of our country. We are the party in government. The legislature is part of government. We'll be able to build synergy, build consensus around issues and find resolutions to it so that we can deliver on the dividends of democracy as we promised our people. And of course, His Excellency Mr. President addressed all their concerns, assuring them that party, matters of party will be properly addressed and none of them should have fear. This is part of confidence building and bridging the gap between executive and legislature. A similar engagement will be held with senators in the coming days. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. President Muhammad Buhari this evening granted audience to the Senate President Bukola Saraki at his official residence. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports that the meeting took place yesterday rather and might not be unconnected with the political maneuvering ahead of Nigeria's 2019 elections. The Senate President Bukola Saraki is visiting the State House barely 24 hours after his purported engagement on political issues with the leadership of the PDP at his Ilorin residence. In attendance at this meeting with President Muhammad Buhari were Vice President Emi Oshibaju, the governors of Zamfara, Katsina, Kebbi, and Ogun states, as well as the new Ekiti State Governor elect. No reason was given for the meeting held behind closed doors for about 40 minutes and the participants declined comments when confronted by newsmen. President Muhammad Buhari had earlier received on a thank you visit the governor-elect of Ekiti State, Dr. Kayode Faemi, accompanied by the governors of Kebbi and Ogun states. He congratulated Dr. Faemi on his well-deserved victory at the polls and urged him to make good his promise of reclaiming Ekiti land and restoring his values. Dr. Faemi told newsmen that the trust and confidence in him by the people will not be in vain. 
for us, it's about total development of our people, human capital development in education, in healthcare, in uh, social services, in um, infrastructure development. It's the totality of development that we focused on, including provision of food on the table. That's why we increased salaries three times in four years when we were in office. There was a huge difference between what we did and this governance of lack of salaries, of uh, hopelessness, of haplessness, of um, despair and despondency. And that is really what our people want to get out of. And that's why we talk about restoring the values of equity and reclaiming the land. In the meantime, the president received in audience the representatives of the family of the late Dr. Alex Ikweme, former vice president of Nigeria. As you may all be aware, the former Vice President of Nigeria, Dr. Alex Ayekweme, passed on on November 19, 2017. The federal government was gracious enough to give him a befitting state burial. And so we've come as family and the cabinet of Oku community and other chiefs and friends to say thank you. Professor Ikweme said, Political issues were not discussed at the meeting with the president. 2019 is coming. Yes. I know it's coming to an umbrella table. Yes. 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 Want to do. Where did the Kelly? Ah. <laughs> Thank you very much. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. National Chairman of APC, Comrade Adams Oshimoli, says the party cannot afford to lose any of its members because of internal crises in some state chapters of the party. This was when he received Benue State Governor Samuel Otom at the APC National Secretariat. Salihu Abdullahi reports. For some time now, the national leadership of the APC has reason to worry about the crisis within the party in some states, especially Benue. This development attracted the attention of the party's national leadership, which resolved to tackle headlong all lingering issues. Former Benue State Governor George Akume on Tuesday visited the party's secretariat. So also is Governor Samuel Otom this Thursday, although details of the meeting with George Akume was not known as he did not respond to questions from newsmen. Governor Otom, on the other hand, responded to questions from journalists where he reaffirmed his continued loyalty to the APC. Well, I'm here in uh, APC. I'm a member of APC. I'm still flying the flag of APC. And uh, I only said I was given a red card, but I've been corrected by the National Secretary. Governor Otom is not going anywhere. He's a very, very prominent member of our party. We appreciate his leadership in Benue, and we will do everything possible to help those who have issues, to have those issues resolved. Comrade Oshamale says the current NWC under his watch is determined to settle differences among aggrieved members and move on with the task of building the party towards success in future elections. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. Medical practitioners in the country have been challenged to make healthcare service a truly divine call so as to earn and sustain public trust. President Muhammad Buhari, who threw the challenge at an audience with the national offices of the Nigerian Medical Association, restated his administration's commitment to universal health coverage through improved budgetary allocation to the sector. State House correspondent Adam Musambo has details. President Muhammad Buhari said as a retired military officer, he holds similar perspectives on health care with medical professionals that their lives and everything must be dedicated to securing lives and promoting healthy living. I'd like to urge you that you make your service a truly divine call by making sure that you explore all necessary avenues to resolve any grievances rather than embarking on strike. This will surely earn you trust from the people 
and government of Nigeria. He, however, noted with delight that despite prevailing challenges, Nigerian doctors have distinguished themselves in different fields of endeavors, with some hospitals offering cutting-edge services like separation of conjoined twins, open-heart surgery, and renal transplant, which ordinarily could have warranted referral abroad. This administration puts quality health care as a priority. We are surely committed to the realization of universal health coverage. The basic health care provision fund of 51.1 billion Naira is in the 2018 budget appropriation. The much talked about 1% in the National Health Act. The federal government, he said, is considering the Ayala Ahmed report as a platform in resolving the interprofessional rivalry in the health sector, while the board of the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria will soon be reconstituted. The national president of the Nigerian Medical Association thanked the president for the numerous achievements recorded in the health sector in the last three years. These include signing into law, the residency training act, President Mohammed Buhari has approved the appointment of the chief executive officers of three agencies under the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development. A statement from the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation names Engineer Umar al barka Hassan as the Director General of the National Steel Raw Materials Exploration Agency, Kaduna while engineer Linus Okun Asukwo is the new DG of the National Metallurgical Development Center, JOS. Also appointed is Professor Suleiman Bolaji Hassan as the Director General of the Nigeria Institute of Mining and Geosciences, JOS. All the appointments take effect from July 12, 2018. Stakeholders at the public hearing on a bill for an act to provide for the enforcement and punishment of crimes against humanity, war crimes, genocide and other related offences are with, of the view that the quick passage of the bill will go a long way towards ending impunity in the country. This was at a one-day public hearing by the House Committee on Treaties, Protocol and Agreements with stakeholders in Abuja. John Yaku reports that the committee also received memoranda for an act to give effect to the Stockholm Convention on persistent organic pollutants in the country. The two bills sponsored by representatives Nicholas Osai and Stephanus Dong are international treaties seeking domestication in Nigeria. However, the provision on domestication of treaties in Nigeria as enshrined in Section 12 of the 1999 Constitution, as amended, says, no treaty between the Federation and any country shall have the force of law except to the effect that such treaty has been enacted into law by the National Assembly. The public hearing is therefore to give the legislative backing to the above treaties before they are entered into. It's not meant to substitute the national mechanisms, but to complement them. The domestication of this bill would therefore give hope to victims and the Nigerian citizens to go to court. Perpetrators of this heinous crime, if arrested and tried, will actually provide a solution for lasting peace. The B for an act to give effect to the Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutant and Other Related Matters also received inputs from stakeholders. The B seeks to protect human health and environment by banning the production and use of some of the toxic chemicals that are dangerous to the environment. Chairman of the committee appreciated the inputs from stakeholders with the promise to include their views in the final report. This is the public hearing on it before we consider the report and have concurrence with the Senate. From the National Assembly, John Yaku, NTA News. And steps to conquer importation in the country underway. Details after this timeout. The struggle for independence had been a long and tough one. Our founding fathers and compatriots sacrificed their comfort and even shed their blood. We cannot at this point in history afford to spirit away their sacrifices for immediate but temporary gains of today. Let us emphasize what unites and not what divides us.
working for the unity of purpose with a stronger vision for a better tomorrow. NTA, growing with the nation. Together, no matter where you come from, no matter your religion, we are one. Let's live together. Let's stop fighting each other. Let us live as one. Families have become refugees in their country No matter our differences, show some understanding No matter where you come from, no matter your religion We are one, let's be together Nigeria, the only country we can train with remarkable potentials to excel let us believe in ourselves and change our attitude for the sake of our country and generations unborn. Let us revive our cultural values, which are our essence as a nation. Let us renew the spirit of patriotism and hope in our dear country. Do not take or give bribe. Be punctual always. No more African time. We can't expect to be global citizens and operate on African time. Join the queue. Insist that people are attended to on a first-come basis no matter who they are or where they come from. Nigeria, good people, great nation. Thanks for being there. Nation building is a long and challenging political process where both leaders and the citizenry must undertake with seriousness the education of the electorate on the importance of electoral integrity in order to promote good governance. This was the focus of the annual lecture at the Executive Management Intelligence course organized by the Institute for Security Studies, Aliu Tukur reports. Over 60 years of post-colonial rule, nation building in most African countries has been an uphill task as a result of the disruption and fragmentation of the societies caused by the colonial heritage. Nigeria is not an exception to this challenge, and with the 2019 general elections fast approaching, the Institute for Security Studies in its annual lecture, which is the second in the series, chose to discuss democracy and the challenges of nation building in Africa. With effective governance, you can lessen or mitigate some of the challenges of insecurity. So if there's better governance, there'll be better employment opportunities, there'll be less youth disillusionment. Professor Tahiru Jega, who delivered the keynote address, says the process of nation building is internally generated, and to achieve this, Citizens must concentrate on leadership preparation and selection in order to deepen the democracy and also ensure that there is good governance process that can deliver on the needs of the electorate. There is a clear correlation between citizens having a national identity and working as citizens first and foremost uh, and uh, deepening democracy and also addressing uh, uh, development uh, in countries. The Executive Management Intelligence Corps aim at fostering inter-security agencies' collaboration to tackle national emergencies has 57 participants from 23 security agencies. In Abuja, Aliu Tukur, NTA News. The manufacturing sector in Nigeria is becoming much more promising with the newfound confidence among key players as a result of the Buhari administration's effort to break away from an import-dependent economy. Correspondent Usman Aliu reports that with the renewed impetus by the government, industries are beginning to excel in their capacity and delivery. This exhibition is about the value of harnessing abundant resources in the country. 
It tells of the level of communication now in Nigeria, the readiness against dependency on foreign materials, especially in the construction industry, a continued quest for ideals by the Buhari administration for the country to realize its tremendous potentialities, the result of harnessing them for economic prosperity and better future. Industries like the West African ceramics in Ajakuta is beginning to change narrative in the area of exporting raw materials and importing finished goods. Now this company, with the production capacity of 30,000 square meters of tiles a day, is also harnessing precious stones, the marbles and granites, which before now were imported. Branding its product, Royal Ceramics, explains much of the quality and planned expansion for the varieties in the housing needs and more engagement of workers. First of its kind in Nigeria and West Africa, these products, marbles and granites, bring dual benefit in ownership, extraction and exploitation. It is international standard. Even better than some of these uh, tiles that you bring from th uh, Taiwan and Thailand and China. This roofing, a heat and wind resistant, favorable to Nigeria's weather, is made by the Nigeria's West African Ceramics, a proof of its viability, it says, to support an affordable housing project by the federal government. In Abuja, Osman Aliu, NTA News. The Nigeria Christian Pilgrims Commission, NCPC, has emphasized the need for Nigerians to properly reposition themselves as a people with value within and outside the country. The executive secretary was speaking when the group managing director, leadership newspaper, Abdul Gombi, paid him a courtesy visit in Abuja. Ifain Izumba reports. The aim of the visit is to look at ways the two organizations can synergize to provide public enlightenment, information and education to the public on what is expected of them within the confines of the law during visits to other countries. We believe that the NCPC has a dual mandate as a service provider to Nigerian pilgrims and also as a regulatory body for Every stakeholder, uh, all relevant stakeholders are engaged in the business of providing services for uh, the Nigerian pilgrim. I appreciate the very kind words uh, you have spoken and for the pan partnership you have generously offered uh, to us. One of the things that I think Nigeria needs very much today is a proper repositioning of ourselves as a people. We need to also venerate people in the media, people who have advanced things. The Nigerian Christian Pilgrims Commission, NCPC, was established by an act in 2007. Since its inception, the commission has advanced in leaps and bounds due to committed and purposeful leadership. In Abuja, Ifani Izumba, continues. The International Republican Institute and National Democratic Institute have commended Nigeria's relentless efforts towards advancing freedom and democracy. This came up when the Democratic Institutes visited the National Working Committee of the African Democratic Congress, ADC, in Abuja. Timothy Youssef reports. <laughs> Democracy in Nigeria since 1999 has continued to advance. This the International Democratic Institutes attributed to successive transitions at tenure expiration every four years. The institutes promised genuine commitment to assist in Nigeria in possible ways to deepen the nation's democracy. We started um, um, our mission by making a short trip to a Kiti state uh, because we wanted to see how the INEC, the Independent National Election Commission, uh, will proceed in implementing some of the new guidelines uh, that it has adopted since the 2015 national elections. National Chairman of the African Democratic Congress, Raf Nwosu, restated the party's commitment to moving Nigeria to a greater future if given the opportunity in subsequent elections. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. And on to sports. 
FIFA adjudges Nigeria 25th best team at World Cup as Scrabble Federation targets at the grassroots level. Kene Emma Bodike reports.